Hi guys, so today we are very lucky to have Terry Matilski who will from Rutgers University who will tell us all about how to use DS9 and some really, really neat exercises using the Chandra data set as part of the DS9 software. So take it away, Terry. Okay, well, uh, hello everybody. What I'd like to do just at the beginning is tell you a little bit about what we're trying to Exactly the same object. 
On the left, we have the ROSAT image of Cat A, which is a supernova remnant. And on the right, we have the Chandra image. And you can see the exquisite detail we get in Chandra. And actually, in fact, when ROSAT was launched, uh, it was a triumph in its own right. But now we're sort of used to this beautiful stuff. I mean, all of these, and we'll pay particular attention in a little while to this blowout region over here, which you really can't even detect over here in the ROSAT uh, satellite image. The second thing we get is the energy. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you can look at the brightness of an object and just have it be bright, and it doesn't matter really what the energy is. And in that sense, I like the grayscale because basically when you look at an object in grayscale, you are looking at the brightness of a region, say this particular place in the remnant, without regard to its actual quote-unquote color. Now, we're used to having colors displayed blue, red, green, whatever. But, of course, x-rays, unless you're Superman, do not really exhibit a particular color. So we generate what we call false color data. And this is very, very interesting and also a little bit confusing for students who aren't quite understanding of what the difference is between what brightness something has and what its color might be associated with that brightness. So we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in just a little bit. The third thing and the last thing that we have is available is the time of arrival for each photon. Now we're used to when we take a photograph just seeing an instantaneous snapshot, and we don't really figure out or care about, usually, the arrival time of each part of that snapshot. So, for instance, if you look at this picture of a hummingbird, which I took with, oh, geez, I think the exposure here was a 500th of a second, and you can see, you can hardly see the bird's wings here. So, the wings are going up and down at an incredible rate, and you just see it as a blur. That's all you have available. However, if you could see each individual photon as it arrived in the camera, as I have indicated over here, which is the light curve, not of the hummingbird, but of Cenex 3 an X-ray source, you see immediately that you have a signal that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, about once every five seconds. So this gives us a clue as to what this X-ray source is all about. And we'll have more to say about that in a few minutes. Okay, so I think that's about it as far as what we actually get 